All right, today we're going to take a look at Unit 2, Lesson D, Justifying the Reasonableness of a Solution. Our objective here is, I can justify the reasonableness of a solution. When we're working with word problems, one of the biggest things we need to make sure is, does your answer make sense? So does the answer make sense? Also, can you explain the answer? So let's take a look at our first example here. So we're talking about some cell phones. Tom and Jerry have their own cell phones. Tom's plan charges 75 cents per text message and long distance calls are free. Then we talk about Jerry. Jerry's plan is 35 cents per text message and a one-time charge of $10 for all long-distance calls. Then it asks us, at most, how many texts could Tom spend to have the cheaper bill? If he's going to have the cheaper bill, he is going to spend less money. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that X is equal to my number of texts. Then I'm going to set up my inequality for the information given. So if I take a look first at Tom, it says that Tom pays 75 cents per text. Remember that per means multiplication. Then if I take a look at the information they give us about Jerry, it says that Jerry pays 35 cents per text message, and then also has that $10 fee for long distance calls. So now when we're looking for inequality, we want Jerry to be the one to spend more money. We want Tom's bill to be less, so we're going to use that less than or equal to, so that he is spending less money. So now we have the inequality that was set up just like in Unit C, or Lesson C, so what we're going to do is go ahead and solve. So first thing I'm going to do is remember I want to get all of my variables on one side and all my constants on the other. So I'm going to take um, 0.35x from each side. So they cancel here. So I have 0.4x is less than or equal to 10. Next thing I'm going to do to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 0.4. So I get x is less than or equal to 25. So if I go back and check my problem where I take x and I put that in, I take 0.75x, I'm going to replace it with 25. So I have 0.75 times 25 is less than or equal to 0.35 times 25 plus 10. When I plug this into my inequality and I solve, the check is going to mean that they are the same. So their bills will be exactly the same if they each send 25 texts. So now, if we want Tom to have the cheaper bill, we need to explain our answer. So, in order for Tom to have the cheaper bill, cheaper bill, he can't send more than 24 texts. If he does, then he'll end up spending more money than Jerry. All right, so this is our first example. We justified our solution. We said what this inequality means. Does it make sense? Yeah, we checked it here. So now let's take a look at our next example. We're going to save the you try for class tomorrow. You're going to do the same thing where you're going to explain your answer. Number two is a little bit different. It's a little bit more of an open-ended question. So it says, describe an example that explains the inequality x is greater than or equal to 5. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up with one, 
then you guys are going to come up with one on your own and we'll be able to look at them in class tomorrow. So if I'm looking for anything where I have x is greater than or equal to 5, if you think about um, a situation where this works, so where I have x is greater than or equal to 5. This is pretty open-ended. You can pick any example that you want as long as your number is greater than 5. So if you go to the store to buy a t-shirt, maybe all the t-shirts cost more than $5. So your t-shirts at a store, at a store, cost $5 or more. Maybe another one is you have to be at least five feet to ride the roller coaster. So what this means is if I'm five feet or taller then I can ride the roller coaster. So what I want you guys to do now is pause your video and go ahead and come up with a second example. We're going to save the you try once again for class tomorrow for this second one. But we're going to take a look at our third example here. Number three is a little bit different. The difference here is we are going to have to identify and describe the steps in each equation that we're using to solve our equation. So if we take a look at our first step, so from looking, this is our original. This is our original problem. So if we're looking at from this step to step one, all we did here is distribute our two to each term inside our parentheses. we take a look at step two, they want us to explain what we did. We add two to both sides. Remember, because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And we're going to move all of our variables to one side. And constants or the numbers to another. So in this step what I did is I decided to move all of my constants to one side. So next I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And in this case, this is where I moved all of my variables over to the other side. Because if we look, they cancel out here. So now when we get to step four, what I did was divide by negative one on both sides. So that our x is all alone. to solve the problem. So what you guys are going to have to do on your quiz or on your test or even tomorrow in class is you're going to be able to you're going to need to have to be able to use this vocabulary of distributing and adding and subtracting and remember that the constant is just another word for a number. We need to know that we subtracted here so that we can get those six x's to cancel out. So these are all vocabulary that you guys should be familiar with, and we do use them in class as well. So this last use tries to find an error. You guys are going to take a look at it tomorrow in class. So what I need you guys to do now is fill out that bottom portion of this worksheet. After this video, what can you do? If you're still confused on things, you need to fill in that next line and then tell us what you can do to help yourself.